<laughs> it's just it's just a novelization of Children of Men, and they just change the title. Like, don't don't, yeah, they don't check. Don't look don't look too hard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what else is not too hard? <laughs> Was it? Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to Pixlet. My uh, name is Kevin. With me today is Jesse, and uh, we're continuing on the path of. Uh, reading Dead Island. I was going to say the path of righteousness, but this is not righteous at all. <laughs> no, it's the exact opposite of it's it's wrongchiousness, if anything. Wrongchiousness. Um, yeah. So, uh, Jesse, how you doing? <laughs> I'm, how you doing? I'm well. But, I'm here. I've read a book, <laughs> and I'm excited to talk about more of it with you, my good friend. <laughs> um. So before we get into it, uh. This is an episode that I have to give a content warning for. For uh, we have some uh, sexual references to sexual assault in this section of the book that we're going to discuss. Not great uh, blanket content warning for racism, I guess. But you know we're beyond the pale with that one already. <laughs> yeah, that the book came in hard with that and has not slowed down. That was that was right on the tin. Uh, so yeah, well, we're going to go ahead and put this body in the marsh with, uh, chapter eight. I'm embarrassed. Um, so chapter eight, Whew. they're, they're, they're going through Moresby, the town, and they hear church bells as they arrive. And, um, uh, Perna, uh, meanwhile, is an annoyed that Jin just exists. She just <laughs> fucking hates Jin so much. Yeah. Uh, and Jin is like, I'm not going to handle any weapons because I'm a pacifist. And Perna just hates that. She hates it so much. Um, and then there's a disagreement amongst the group about whether they should actually go check out the church because the bell is ringing. And Perna's like, why are we doing this? And they outvote her. So they go to check out the church. It's like world's worst D&D group. <laughs> yeah, just straight towards the bad guy. You know, there's someone there. How many alive yeah. people are there on the island? Probably yeah. not a good thing. Not a good thing. Um, they have to get out and walk because there's no road that goes up to the church, and they have to fight through a horde of zombies that appear in the graveyard like a thriller video. And <laughs> um, page 135 has a moment in which uh, the author decided to refer to as a kid that is coming to attack them as uh, it was a teenage boy, a ghetto kid. His clothes were <sighs> frayed and threadbare. Like, <laughs> there's been a lot of description of, of characters and people who've been turned into zombies or, or whatever they're calling it in this. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's not, it doesn't feel particularly valuable. Like, no. I don't feel... Like they're more human because I know they're wearing like a Batman t-shirt or something, you know? I'm just like, right. okay, yeah. our world's greatest lover, you know? Yeah. So to do that in particular is like, you didn't have to describe the down and out, down and out colored boy who just got stabbed <laughs> by this, this group of people. Like, why why do that? What are we, what are we, what's the point of any of this? So I feel bad about who they're killing, but like, they're just, they were humans. I, I already feel bad for that or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's not, it's not great. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, ghetto kid, uh, gets killed. <laughs> <laughs> God. Isn't there another one that gets killed out. in this chunk where they're kind of, they're making their way to the church, uh, and, and it's described as, what is it? The, the shotgun blast that Perna does collides with a woman uh, and it's described as both of the, both the enemy and the, the, it's the zombie. And I think Jin's with the zombie and she describes it as both of them going down like Skittles. <laughs> yes. Like that's how they fell. And like, they, sh like they shattered like Skittles hitting the ground. I'm like, what are we, what are we <laughs> like doing? Skittles. What, what weird way to describe are these? Yeah. Right. Those big, heavy Skittles. What? what? <laughs> I don't. I've never heard um, anyone describe anything falling as it's as it being like Skittles, like Skittles. There's another weird description later. Uh, I I think I highlighted um, 
where it was just like, oh, uh, we'll get to this scene, but they are swarmed like wasps attracted to a picnic. And I was like, yeah, w- ants. Like, I guess. Yeah. Ants. It, that's the thing. <laughs> M- much like Paul Rudd. Ants. Like I just, that's, that's the thing. That's the line. Everyone knows that it's like ants to a picnic. It's like a fat yeah. kid on cake. It's like, yeah. you know, falling down like Skittles. You know, everyone yeah, says falling these down like Skittles. Yeah. You know, Skittles famously falling down. Uh, <laughs> fucking Skittles. You think you're pouring them into your hand. You're not pouring them in your hand. They're like missing your hand. Go right to the ground. Falling like Skittles. Boom. You know, everyone knows this hashtag falling like Skittles. Um, <laughs> So uh, in my notes, I write, things get violent, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. <laughs> that, it, it's, it's like pages and pages of you just had a, a page limit you had to hit. And he was like, I don't know. Here's some more death and destruction uh, and viscera. Uh, uh, Enjoy. I'll, I'll just go through all the fight scenes and extend them by five pages. And that should yeah. do it. Double space. <laughs> this is a novella before then. Um, <laughs> it's a tight 80. This is 80 clean pages. It was, tight, it was tight 80, in and out, you know? Yep. Uh, so Jin actually hits one of the zombies with a crowbar, uh, and she's really upset about that. Uh, May is the one who actually kills the zombie, but Jin's upset that he, that she actually hit the zombie with the crowbar. Uh, and Perna consoles Jin as she cries uh, that she was in the fight. So... Um, yeah, there's, they keep going. There's another zombie that they have to kill. And then they knock on the door and they meet a man named Ed Lacey, who is on the island as, uh, he's a vacationer. He's there with his wife and, uh, he gives them the lay of the land in the church. Here's the church. Here's the steeple, um, opening the roof and here's all the people. Um, and <laughs> God, <laughs> So he points out, uh, and there's Mr. Owen. He seems to be having a heart attack. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude. What a... I don't know. Look at Mr. Owen. He's dying. Uh, Jin's like, this we're going to help you. This is the naked dude, right? No. No, this is later. He's okay, just, yeah. He's just on the on the bench having a heart attack. Um, Jin's like, let's help out. And Perna goes... No. And then Ed is like, well, maybe we can work something out. And he takes them to the back where Sister Helen and a man named Danny are ringing the bells for some reason. And Sister Helen, full tinfoil hat on this being the apocalypse. She's like, God's wrath, you know, is coming to smite <laughs> us all. That's that's yep. what this is. Finally. She's, you know, finally. Um and, and then Ed is like, don't ask Sister Helen why she thinks God's wrath is. <laughs> There's so like quest givery here too. Like so Very gameplay. Quest-givery. You can feel like, okay. You can feel right. the exclamation point above the their heads as yeah. they're waiting for you. <laughs> um, so they come up with a plan. Danny knows how to get into the police armory because he installed it for the cops uh, so he knows all the codes. And, uh, so the goal is they're going to go get guns for the people at the church. Uh, and I don't even know what they're necessarily getting out of that. Oh, well, yeah, they get, the group gets guns too. So everybody gets yeah, guns. Maybe everybody even gets explosions guns. or explosives. Maybe, rather. maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Chapter nine though, uh, we get. Um, I mean, I know authors who use subtext and they're all cowards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right on the, right there at the beginning of chapter nine, uh, our author <clears throat> writes that the zombie, the zombies grouped up uh, in the street are a hideously grotesque parody of, of consumerism. Like, and nice, dude. My man. You, you understand zombies. You figured it out. Congratulations. You, it out. <laughs> you know, George Romero managed to do a whole movie without actually saying that and said that. Uh, but you just wrote it there. Um, yeah. Good for you. Good for you. Uh, he just <laughs> rented Dawn of the Dead. 
He had literally just read to Dawn of the Dead before writing this scene. Yeah, and was like, uh, hey, I think these people are wage slaves. Hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Next, I'm going to write a book about vampires, but they're all going to be rich people. <laughs> no one will see this coming. Stupid. <laughs> Sorry, Stupid. Mark. Sorry, Mark. You're not st- stealing from from George Romero or or uh, Anne Rice in this house. No. Nope. Um, <laughs> anyway, they're bopping through town. Uh, there's a lot of zombies walking around the main stretch, but noise. They confirm their hypothesis is that noise isn't what attracts the zombies. Uh, cars themselves really don't catch their attention. Um, they get to their first stop, the police station, and they're going to load up on guns. Uh, outside this police station, though, there's a fashionista zombie, and they're like, uh, you know, we get a full description about how she's wearing a, a Christian Dior uh, T-shirt uh, yep. or She got the Gucci's you. on. She's wearing the Balenciagas. She got, she, yep, yep. Red heels, uh, Louboutins uh, yep. on, you know, all that fun stuff. <laughs> With, uh, yeah, Louis Vuitton purse. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, they're like, oh, maybe she won't notice us but then they're spooked because there's like another one that appears jump scare ah um so then all the <laughs> all the zombies are looking at them now and uh perna basically just gta's around the city a few times yeah that is the way to describe it she just like is just <laughs> ripping and tearing in this vehicle just knocking into corpses smashing them around this People flying all over the place in, in well-described fashion. Isn't one of them a, a, a small boy in Batman pajamas who was running <laughs> up behind? Well, like, like, why are we... There's so many children being accurately described and then just absolutely slaughtered in this book. <laughs> absolutely slaughtered. <laughs> there's just no other way to put it. They're getting run over by vans. They're getting stabbed in the neck. Like, it's just, just can we do like, something nice? It's just like, you know, uh, 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 a a lineup of kids and then fucking Ultimate Warrior coming out and (laughs) clotheslining them all. (laughs) Just open the door to the van and we'll just take them all out. Do it all at once. They're all door height. It's fine. They're all door height. Just use the door. That's what it's there for. Oh, God. Um, They get the zombies. uh, They give the zombies the slip because, because they're crafty like that. And they end up back at the police station. Uh, but, hey, it's my daughter. Speaking of kids. Hello. <laughs> yeah. No, well, Phil's, Phil, because Phil's on baby uh, leave yeah. right now. Yeah. Because he had his kid. So this is Jesse. Hello. <laughs> Hello. You're going to get, you're gonna have to get your stomach on again. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> uh, perfectly timed perfectly, perfectly timed, timed. <laughs> it's like she heard what i was saying <laughs> it's like yeah um, oh boy she goes uh did you hear what she said no, no at the end there she no said, i didn't she, she said hello jesse you'll have to get used to me walking in <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh that's um, cute yeah she's adorable i think i'll keep her um <laughs> what a dad so, line what a dad yeah. line. I'm such a dad. Uh, they uh, they get out of the van and they're swarmed like wasps to a picnic. Uh, again, what? Uh, <laughs> they uh, they get inside the uh, the police station and whoops, there's some bad guys in there already. And oh, they have man. guns. Oh, man. And, uh, and you're not talking about zombies. No. They, hey. I'm talking about real real deal bad dudes yep um they and they they have the drop on the group and uh so they have to put all their guns down and they're talking back and forth and danny lets it slip accidentally he's like but i have the codes so we all can get guns what a moron danny danny you beautiful dumb boy um (laughs) to be fair we all know the code of the door it's oh four five one of course it oh, is. four five one on. of course it is what yeah else would be? um you know when have you ever played have you played gloomwood i have yeah that's my favorite 
oh four five one. When we put game. it in, it, it like yeah, it like shocks it, every yours. safe can open, but it just explodes, <laughs> and you don't get anything that's in the safe. It's so funny because he uh, the the developer Dylan Rogers. We did a whole documentary about it uh, for NoClip. He was talking about oh, how. Yeah. Um, the the reason that he does that is because like he thinks it's just funny that people are so into 0451 as the default code or first yeah. code for so many immersive sims and he's like you know what let's prank these nerds and he fucking gets everybody and it's really funny yeah. gets everybody and it's like it's right in his twitter username taffer king 451 yep <laughs> huge thief thief fan yeah huge immersive sim fan he's really cool he's a smart guy yeah uh gloomwood it's a good it's a good game good game check it out yeah. if, if people out there in the audience if you haven't it's still in early access still they're still adding stuff to it but it's worth checking out totally um so uh anyway uh Perna offers them a deal they'll go to the store and get food and water for them in return they can take some of the guns and the goons agree but they're going to keep danny and Jin as leverage Womp, womp, womp. Uh, yeah, womp womp is um, what for what's about to happen? It's an understatement. Womp understatement. Is, womp womp, womp, womp is perhaps uh, putting it very nicely. <laughs> very nicely is is what we'll say about that. Uh, <laughs> Sam, Perna, and May approach the grocery store. They kill some zombies. Who cares? And they go into the staff entrance. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> As they who enter cares? The store, is, yeah. At this point, who oh. cares? They they kill some more zombies. Great. Um. Yeah. They enter the store and find a family who is dead. It looks like the father killed his family and then himself. They're not turned. They're just dead, all shot in the head. Dude, and it's they, a The Mist reference. Whoa. What? Whoa, Whoa. Man. man. We're the um, real monsters, aren't we? We're the real monsters. Yep. Um, May calls it an act of love, and Sam responds, that don't mean it ain't fucked up. There we go. Um, per <laughs> Perna then takes the guy's gun and bullets, wasting no time. You got, you got, yep. You gotta Just staring at this body. corpse family. You're like, you know what? <laughs> time to take their resources. Check them for loot. Hit the E key. <laughs> Fuck it. Just that, that Tom uh, Cardi song, Loot That Body, playing in the background. <laughs> Sam, why do you know that song? I don't know, man. <laughs> I just do. <laughs> from 13 years in the future um <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right oh shit oh. Uh, they have a bunch of existential thoughts before they get to the pharmacy there's no uh Naldalol or whatever the guy needs the dying guy who's mm. having a heart attack this entire time on the shelf but may looks back behind a locked door that she kicks open and finds it woohoo wow sam gets attacked sam gets attacked uh, he hits his head on the counter and a zombie bites his wrist. Uh, Perna kills the zombie. Fucking. Oh, no. Uh, but Sam is a little <laughs> bit wounded. Good thing uh, they keep Sam... like reminding us that they're immune. Otherwise, I would yeah, have to like other. think back because yeah. he just got bit by a zombie. Like that's when you you start knocking some heads off when your, your buddies the, start the, getting bitten. But the immunity here. really takes a lot of the tension out of it, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. You're like you're not worried about these people. You're like maybe they get shot, but like I don't know, they get bit or scratched. It's yeah, I don't care. It's <laughs> like, sort whatever. of like Jack Reacher in Reacher. You are you are never worried about Reacher. He is just he, look at him. What are they gonna him. do? He is he's he's the largest man in the world. Yeah, oh, I'm going to fist fight you. That's the guy you're gonna fist fight. Really? That guy? <laughs> Have you seen him? Yeah, like the Have zombies. Like him? I'm totally he's... gonna go bite these guys. You know, those are the only four guys we can't bite, right? I bet yeah. I can. I bet, I bet I'm the I one. I can do it. You know how they're you know, everyone. Uh, you you could destroy ninety nine point nine percent of bacteria. I'm the one. Yeah. I'm the point one. I'm baby. the one. I'm getting it. I'm the one. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm zombie. Hey, oh, here. it's Italian. We're Italian zombies now. What do you want? Italian, hey, you... Italian zombies. What do you I'll want? Go get some uh, gabagool out of that guy. Gabagool. Gabagool. Uh, gabagool. Slice that up thin. Hey, welcome to the the gabagool <laughs> podcast. Italian pixel. Hey, no. <laughs> Uh, every, time. every time with my favorite italian jesse garasha uh. that's me that's me <laughs> never do an ancestry kids never never get your parents to find out that you're not italian never do it just just think you're italian your whole life it was uh, easier 
it's easier. Um, so they patch him up and they grab the food and they uh, they go back to the police station. And uh, the door code is no longer working. Oh, no. The bad dudes have changed a- the access code. I refuse uh, to believe that they knew how to do this or were able to coerce that guy who remembered how to yeah. do the reset part. Like, right. does he know the codes? I'll buy that. Sure. Yeah. You, I, I cannot remember how to change the codes on most things that I own and use regularly. Right. You need the manual. There's no way they had the manual. <laughs> no, he didn't have the manual in front of him. No, he couldn't remember no it. He, he just installed the shit and set the code. Yeah. He didn't like, you know, memorize the book. Memorized, memorized the yeah. book. He's like, because on all these things, it's like, oh, you got to press the thing and hold that for five seconds. And then you got to enter in this access code. Yeah, exactly. That resets it. And then you enter in the code that you want twice. And you're like, okay. Um, all in this time while they're at the store, you know, they're troubleshooting getting the access code. If they actually yeah. just changed, if they had just figured it out right before they arrive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> There's a guy on the other side of the door who's like, oh, whew. <laughs> that good, was a good time one. Yeah. Um, so they leave the food at the door and head back to the van, and then the bad guys just start open fire, opening fire on them. Uh, and there's a brief firefight, um, uh, or uh, for, <laughs> as in what's his name from Food Doc Saint says, there was a fire fight. <laughs> um, <laughs> Deep cut. Holy! <laughs> oh my god! I haven't thought about that show in forever. <laughs> No, no, not the Boondocks. Boondocks Saints. Oh, Boondock Saints. Okay. The, the all right. Irish movie. Yeah. That with the two Irish guys. Uh Willem Dafoe. Fucking Willem mm. Dafoe. Oh my God. It is a uh yeah. Still deep cut. <laughs> that is <laughs> either way. Yeah. Either way you cut it, it's deep. Um so the bad guys are like, yeah, we're keeping the food, but you can have this guy back, and they throw Danny out the window head first killing him um, <laughs> just neck 90 degrees there's a lot of 90 neck, degree necks in this just, uh just, this just book. bam you yeah. know ouch um and they say they are keeping gin though for entertainment which is and this is when the book takes uh a turn and and really never recovers really never opinion. recovers you know yeah. i had to look this up apparently this happens in the game too okay so one could say the game never recovers from this moment yeah. either. Damn, yeah. I had no idea. I, I yeah. wow, wow, brutal indeed. Uh, I know I didn't know this because I had skipped all the cutscenes up to this point. But apparently, it happens in the game. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, I can't blame all this right. guy for uh, staying true to the true to the inspiration. But it is his fault. We'll get to the line that is. Yeah, his he fault, does write though. something that's a little like man. Man, that okay, is the we'll, worst we'll thing that, that a character's ever said. Anyway, uh, chapter 11, uh, May knows a way that might work for getting into the police station. This is total fucking side quest material right here. Yep. Uh, is like So she explains that there is an old sewer system that connected every building in Moresby. Uh, at the lowest point of every building, there is an entrance into the sewer system. And then they got rid of that. Well, they didn't get rid of it. They just built a normal sewer system that doesn't do that. Uh, <laughs> and then they, uh, uh, but it still might be there. So they're like, let's go back to the uh, grocery store because, uh, you know, the the studio hasn't torn that set down yet. So we could get a few more shots there before Thursday. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why are we backtracking? We couldn't like, come up with a new place to go. Like a like a sewer entrance <laughs> nearby, maybe. No, yeah. we have to go back to the, okay, sure, whatever. I, I forget how much back. money it costs to write new locations into this. <laughs> to write totally new locations into a book. <laughs> like, <laughs> well. You know what's funny is uh, so we talked to Alan Dean Foster last year, um, and he was uh, we, we asked him about um, was it Splinter of the Mind's Eye, which was the original Star Wars sequel book before Empire Strikes Back came out. Mm. Um, and it was written by Alan Dean Foster, uh, who was hired by George Lucas, 
Alan Dean Foster wrote this book because he uh, they wanted a book to adapt into a movie in case Star Wars did not make a ton of money. Right. So like write this book, make it, you know, adaptable into like a mid low budget movie. So Alan Dean Foster wrote this book and he would give the manuscript to George Lucas and Lucas would be like, no, we can't have this space battle. <laughs> Holy um, shit, is George that, Lucas in here right now? That was really good. <laughs> anyway, sorry, go on. <laughs> we have to cut that. So Alan Dean Foster actually had to remove things from the book that might have been too expensive to make as a movie. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> that's so funny. But then Star Wars made a bajillion dollars and, you know, they're like, okay, you can use whatever yeah, budget we'll, you want we'll for Empire Strikes Back. It's we'll fun. do the fun things. Uh, I got to do the the, the ad ads. Um. <laughs> Get out of here, George. No one wants to hear you anymore. Shoo, George, shoo. Yeah, come on. You, you sold them to Star Wars, and now they're doing Mandalorian movies. What are you? What did you do? Yeah, Mandalorian and Grogu. I, I, I hope it's good. I really I, like Grogu. <laughs> I really like that. Grogu. I want to call him something That's else. Marketing genius. I would have called, called him, him Little Yoda. Face, though. <laughs> <laughs> I would have called him Peen Peen. Anyone got a sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> love you, George. Yeah. Love you, love you, George. You're you're a billionaire. You can you can relax now. <laughs> you you can fuck off. All right, all right. You can fuck off. Um. So where are they? They're back at the grocery store. Uh. And they're like, where is it? It's in the lowest point. They go to the they go into the basement and of the warehouse, and they find some old shelf parts that are down there, and they find a manhole cover and pry that right open and it smells fucking awful. Just terrible. And yep. they shoot their flashlights down there. Doesn't reach the bottom. They go down anyway. Um, and as they're walking through the muck of the sewer, they're counting off exits to make sure they get off at the right exit. Uh, what am I? The New Jersey Turnpike? Oh! Um, oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Along the way, they're ca attacked by a croc. Um... Big old crocodile uh, yeah. <laughs> pops Got up. Flush down someone's toilet, probably, as they Got all flushed, do. As a baby, you know, yep. baby, you can't flush baby crocs down the toilet because they'll grow into crocodiles. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they'll also grow into crocodiles if they aren't flushed down the toilet, to be fair. Well, baby crocodiles will always grow into crocodiles. <laughs> well, you'd be surprised. Uh, <laughs> It's actually yeah, I guess their to be fair, Pokemon. I've never seen one grow, so it's actually the the thing that triggers their Pokemon evolution. <laughs> <laughs> For fuck's sake! It's like their stone. You don't need the lightning stone or whatever. You just you, they need a toilet. They just need you to be just flushed. Need a toilet flush. God, it plays the sound effect and everything. <laughs> doom, 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 as it's going now. <laughs> Fuck. Croc is evolving into crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, oh, anyway, get the plunger Perna, get the plunger Perna shoots it right in the fucking face um, <laughs> and and they like hurry up the, the ladder just in case it's not quite dead um, <laughs> dude at least fucking crocodiles can't use ladders yeah crocodiles can't use ladders they get yeah. tiny little who, who, who's <laughs> thinking that is that Sam B that's thinking that? Yeah, Sam B thinks yeah. about how crocodiles can't use ladders. Of course he is. Um, He's such a genius. What a smart he's man. He's a genius. He's a smart man. Smartest yeah. of them all. Um, they're not bears. Bears can use a ladder. Bear, a bear will use a ladder. That is true. <laughs> I've seen it, especially if they're on cocaine. <laughs> especially if they're on cocaine. Uh, how was that movie? Oh, you dude. You saw that? Uh, you know what? It's the kind of movie that I think you need to see. Uh, Tuesday matinee. Go with like, make sure you're in a part of a city that has... Um, people who don't have any sort of manners, because it's not the kind of movie you need to see and like experience the whole narrative of or become engrossed in. Right. It's like the movie you put on while you're folding your laundry. Um, but if you go and see it in a theater with people who just have no candor at all, they'll just, just like talk to the movie because that's when you have the most fun watching that kind of crap. It's not good. Sure. But like when you have people in the audience who see a child taking cocaine for the first time and the people in the audience the thing that they decide to say is honey that's too much i think that's the version of the movie that you want to see like they were so concerned that this girl was not that she was taking cocaine that she was taking too much cocaine she could have just knocked the dosage down a little bit and maybe been okay and that was their concern or like near the end of the movie uh ray liotta is like 
uh, who's in the movie, by the way. Uh, Ray Liotta, like, rest in peace. Yeah, one of his uh, last performances, Cocaine <laughs> Bear. I think it's his second last movie he ever starred in. Um, he just shows up again. He was in the start for like five seconds, and he's at the end again. Um, and they're like, we're all rooting for the bears at that point. Like, just the way the, right. the arc of the story goes. And, and he gets got, and the, I think the same woman is like, Ray! And I'm like, you, shut up! <laughs> like, you, you can't hear, no, Ray! Like, wait until she finds out what really happened to him. <laughs> like, yeah, and I'll be like, sorry to tell you, Ray yeah. Liotta is actually dead. <laughs> <laughs> that, that reminds me of when, uh, this is totally unrelated now, we're just, we're talking about something more fun. Um, yeah. When, when uh, uh, my fiance, we were watching Sopranos for the first time, um, we were like maybe on se- season three, season four, um, mm-hmm. and we're talking about how much we love these characters, how much we love the cast, the actors are really good. She's like, uh, and I think the day that um, Tony Sirico died, the guy who plays Pauly, uh, she was like, oh, that's really sad. Well, that's okay. At least I could still meet Tony. And I was like, oh, babe. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I got I got sad news for you. She's like, is sad he dead news too? For you. And I was like. He's dead as dirt. That man's been dead for a while. <laughs> yeah, James Gandolfini died a surprisingly long like time ago. 14 years ago? Something like that? <laughs> yeah. Like, an uncomfortably <laughs> long time ago. She was, like, yeah. so devastated. It's just so funny when people find out that an actor's dead and they're like, I just saw him on TV. And I'm like, yeah, this show came out no, like 20 years ago. <laughs> he's dead. You know? Yeah. I mean, like, fucking, uh, you should see how young Idris Elba looks in The Wire. Like, oh yeah, we watched the first like, episode of that, and I was like, "Wow, he's such a little baby! Look at him! Oh my god, time's a bastard!" Huh? Uh, <laughs> it is a bastard. Uh, speaking of the wire, uh, I mean, also dead. Michael K. Was it Michael K. Williams? Uh, yeah, from the and Lance Reddick uh, now actually, and Lance Reddick. Yeah, God, Andre Brower and Lance Reddick in the same year. Yeah, oh, man, Just, brutal. Yeah, they 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 always played the uh, the the stern the stern black cop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was their that, that was that a was big their part of their thing. career. Yeah, that was their. Well, they had other things, but you know, the cornerstone. You get a little typecast sometimes. It happens. Yeah, sometimes. If you're good at what you do. Um, they'll hire you forever. They'll hire you forever. You know, uh, but you know what? What won't hire you forever is this book. <laughs> because it keeps going fantastic going well done uh yeah i, I try them sometimes you know <laughs> Segu- sometimes i segue sometimes i don't uh speaking of segues that would have been a great way to get around moresby as a segue so they <laughs> beautiful we're really trying to uh, delay talking about what we have to talk about in like yeah three minutes. we gotta talk about it though yeah we do we gotta let's we'll talk about it um so sam climbs to the top of the ladder and it's a he's like ah, i gotta push this thing up i don't think i'm gonna be able to push it up and he spends like a page talking about how he might not be able to push it up and then he is able to push it up because it's just a wooden trap door and not a manhole cover um <laughs> i was falling asleep at this point I think I literally, this is the point where I was like, I got to go to bed. <laughs> I, go to bed. <laughs> I can't do it's it anymore. It's nap time. It's sleep yeah. time. It's 11 o'clock at night and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm tired. Mm-hmm. Um, so they, uh, they get up there and, uh, they're, they're find themselves in a janitor's closet. Uh, fucking Ati from control is standing there. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> what are you doing there? <laughs> <laughs> he's speaking Finnish. I'm like, well, I didn't know there's anyone from Finland in this game. It's crazy. Uh, Ati goes through the door. He disappears. Fucking wild. That would have made this a more interesting story if it. Just, oh, totally. Yeah, but that's it, just too high level for for this Dead level. Island story. For this, we have deeper, um, lower level stuff to talk about. Yeah, we're getting to the bottom of this. Uh, they're in the they're in the police station and uh, they they walk around. Perna sees the guys. They're playing a card game. Jin is looking a lot worse for wear on, uh, sitting on the couch. Perna draws up a little plan. They set off to rescue Jin. The plan is basically just fucking shoot them. Like it's, it's good plan. It's, <laughs> it's they just they just surprise uh, surprise motherfucker and shoot all of them. Uh, two guys dead right off the bat. The third guy is wounded with a gut shot. Um, 
And he's like, ah, you got to help me. You got to take me with you. Um, meanwhile, May is consoling Jin because Jin is all sorts of messed up. And we'll find out soon um, why that is. Uh, Perna is about to shoot the guy. Uh, and then Sam says, no, it's his turn to do this. And then he takes from the, the gun from her, killing the bad guy. Um, I guess that's a reference to when Perna killed that, snapped that woman's neck in one of the early earlier chapters. Oh, yeah, but I guess that is what that is. They just shot two guys. Like, I I don't know yeah. why it, it becomes a dramatic moment for this other guy. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't, I don't question know. it anymore, man. Sometimes things just need to be drawn out for some reason. Just some yeah. things get four paragraphs. Some things get one. Uh, sure, or, whatever. Or none, because or none. suddenly they're back at the lifeguard station. Yep. <laughs> yeah, they just 12. teleported. They just fast traveled all the way back. Holy shit. <laughs> Fat, one fast travel uh, loading screen later, they're back at the lifeguard <laughs> station, and Logan, oh oh boy, Logan is back in the story. Uh, woohoo. They catch, woohoo. Yeah. They catch Logan up on everything, and they uh, they introduce Jin to him, and Logan is this old Logan wise crack himself. He's like, ah, why don't you talk too much? Eh? <laughs> and then Jin mentions, and uh, this is the content warning part. So, Jump ahead, bunch of 30 seconds things or or whatever, if you don't want to hear it. Jin mentions that she had been held by the guys and raped and beaten by the three men over and over and over again. Yeah. So, mm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, this book has not earned doing this. The game no. didn't earn doing this, apparently, game did either. Not earn this. Yeah. Um, but I think the thing that makes it worse here is that it's like, I don't know. Does this? Did you watch this? Does like, is this cutscene happen where she kind of explains her emotional state, and there's like another conversation happening around it? No, I looked through. I looked through the synopsis on Wikipedia. Uh, I didn't Smart actually man. watch it, but apparently in the game, the difference between the book and the game is Sam. I believe Sam B is angry with her for something in this okay so yeah i mean doesn't improve anything with what's happening here no I mean, it makes it worse in some ways when she brings it up it's midst of uh, it's missed another story right somebody's talking about something else logan or sam yeah is, is telling so they story. get sam is telling logan the story of how they met Jin, and then right. he goes ah i was wondering when they were going to get to you why are you so quiet ha 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 and then Jin tells uh, him what happened and logan shuts the fuck up yeah um but then but then, then immediately can, after yeah. that uh sam who was in the middle of his story so so she has her like her little speech where she explains what happened to her which is like obviously gut-wrenching and i think the reader is just so stunned that this just happened in the middle of this story and then two dialogue exchanges happen logan's a little messed up about it Sam grimaced and carried on with his story, his voice a low rumble. Like, could, maybe we have more important things to deal with. Maybe we can skip the rest of it, you know? Yeah, maybe I don't need to hear the rest of Sam's story. Maybe Sam doesn't need to tell the rest of the story, you know? Maybe we can, like, sit in this moment and let this awful thing happen. We have 200 yeah. almost more pages of this book. It's okay <laughs> if we don't spend three of them describing how a zombie explodes when it's hit by a rake or something. We can like <laughs> sit and like deal with this. We can earn this moment instead of just cuz and then it's even worse cuz it's like what is it? 2 pages later? No, how many more pages do we? It's like 10. Yeah, about uh, yeah. not even well, 10. Where we get to the worst thing ever? Where we get to the worst line I've ever read in a book, period, of all of the books that have ever been written. Like, yeah. I, man, yeah, this was so disrespectful and gross when I read this. I was like so upset. I, I turned to, to Cassie and I'm like, I cannot believe, I cannot believe this book is trying to do this and thinks it's getting away yeah. with it. Yeah, it's not. Um, it cannot pull this off. No. Uh, so Logan, then it's his turn to talk, talks about how the mystery man has been in touch a few times, but the connection was bad. And then he's going to call back uh, soon. And then just then he does. Um, so, you know, they're they're talking to him. And 
Perna asks him a question and the dude does it again where he he takes like half a page to talk about how he doesn't have time. Um, I, uh, it's so frustrating. It's like you've got, you know, like just just shut up. Just shut up and just talk over them. It's okay. Yeah. It's just a, like they can still hear you. It's not the same thing as like a discord call where you're talking yeah. and like it mutes something. It's like, just keep talking. Right. They'll hear you. <laughs> just keep talking. Yeah. Um, so Perna tells him to fuck off and answer the question. And then the guy finally gives his full lore dump. Um, his name <laughs> is, his name is Ryder White. He's a Colonel with the Banoi Island defense force. He wants to get a vaccine for his wife who has been bitten and he thinks the immunity that the gang has might help make one. Uh, and then he asks them to go meet Moen in the uh, in the town that's in the jungle. And uh, Moen knows how to get past the minefield that blocks the prison from everything else. So, yeah. Um, great. Chapter 13. Yeah. Keep rocking. Yep. Uh, Logan gets the full experience of the city as they drive by uh, for the first time. They have to get through the pack of zombies and they all take out their automatic weapons and they begin cutting swaths through the pack. Um, and after they get through it, Logan is shaking, crying, throwing up in the corner. Um, <laughs> He's a little bitch boy. I used to think yeah. shooting zombies would be fun, but this is fucking grim, man. Shut <laughs> up. Shut, Shut up, up, Logan, you loser fucking loser uh <laughs> sam falls asleep for two hours on the car ride there uh the village is one of those ramshackle types with the walls made of mud on the houses and the roofs made of leaves and they decide to find moen by asking at the building that is labeled store and the sign says we sell coca-cola <laughs> <laughs> Some of the that's one of the things where I'm like, I don't know, maybe maybe Mark played the game a little bit and just walked around and that's just some boring, like, you know, flavor text <laughs> in the world. I'd, I'd believe it. Sure. Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, and then as they get out of the van, Logan says the worst thing in the history of books, oh. referencing how the townsfolk are looking at them. Uh, another another little content, little content warning, warning yeah. for for this in chapter 13 and I'm, I, I'm looking it up i didn't write it in my notes I, I i was like my notes don't deserve to have this line written word for word <laughs> yeah i don't blame um, you um uh so i'm just I'm so just, can, just to recontextualize this this line happens i don't know in the story two hours maybe in the book 10 pages after we just heard a girl describe sorry a woman describe her being violently sexually assaulted by three men as she was left by this group of people that she just met not long after losing her father. This is what one of the characters, the, the most gruesome, gross man in the whole group. This is what he says. Logan like, sidles right up after. to Sam and says, Hey man, ever feel like a virgin at a rapist convention? Unfucking believable I closed the book. And I was like, I will come back to this later. Like when I feel emotionally prepared to have to what not want this character to fuck? die. Like, yeah. I cannot believe that that's some shit that was written in a Dead Island book. Dead The video game. The video game about smashing zombie heads in uh, has the most edge lordiest line. And yeah, just the, no one says that. That's not like a thing no one people say. That. It's not a thing. Yeah. Like, it's not even saying. Sam's response is, hush up. Not yeah. even a shut the fuck up or anything more. Just a hush up. Just like what, and, what you're, what a, like a nice black grandma says when like you say something out of turn at a, at a funeral yeah. or something. Like, oh, he was a jerk. Man, hush up, boy. Like, that's, yeah. like, that's Sam's response to that line. I, I would have just shot him. Get it over with. What do we need this guy for? Right he's, he's scared of shooting zombies and he's a piece of shit. <laughs> and then us. Logan Logan responds, "Sorry, man, I forgot." <laughs> I, I already gave the context. This was not that long ago. Like this wasn't like three weeks past. Like this was like t two hours ago, maybe. Just I, happened. I don't know. Yeah, I forgot. Two hours ago. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't know. She started talking, like, and I just turned my ears off, man. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Sorry about yeah, that. Bro. Like, yeah, yeah, bro. I, I guess Jay, maybe this is an accurate representation of the character. You know, I tried to, I tried to rationalize this. I was like, uh, Logan, who went to college and played football and was a jerk and like, you know, killed a girl in a car. And the, the worst thing that uh, came of that scenario was him losing his knee. How would that right. guy react to the story that he just heard? Yeah, he probably would make a joke about it like that. But also, yeah. I have to read that in a book <laughs> called Dead Island. I, I don't care what the rationalization is. This is not the story where you do that or tell that joke. Like, I, I, right. Don't need it. Unbelievable. We, it's, it was, it, 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 I, it is the worst single line of dialogue in, that I have read, um, for this show. Yeah. Period. I believe it. Single worst. It's, it's, we are, we're going to have our three year anniversary, uh, in June. And that was that. T I don't even think there's anything close. Here's the thing. There's nothing that even I, I, I will always remember that line. There's yeah. nothing that even, even like sticks that is that bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. From, from, from three years of reading, uh, of video game novelizations, uh, that line is, is, is the worst. Yeah. Uh, Just so unbearable, unbearable. So, if you skipped that whole section and you're just coming back, uh, welcome. Thank you uh, for for coming back to the show. Um, it's <laughs> good call. You probably personally. you probably good call. You probably did the right thing. Um, so they ask the guy behind the counter. They go to the store. They ask the guy behind the counter if they've seen Moen. He doesn't speak English. And then Jin steps up. She happens to speak the language uh of the the townsfolk and asks hey can you find moen and then that guy tells ostensibly his son to go find moen uh and jin thanks them they're gonna wait outside for moen um buy it for looks buy it for life uh <laughs> <sighs> sorry i'm still coming down off of what we just went through and like we have to try to lighten it up a little bit i know I made uh, a I made a, 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 <laughs> a joke about uh, kitchen faucets. You know <laughs> that works. <laughs> that works. Uh, Moen arrives and tells them that everyone is staring at them because they think the group is cursed, probably because they are covered in blood and chunks of zombie guts. Uh, Moen mentions that instead of going to the prison, maybe they should head to the lab that he thinks is where the virus or originated. It's deeper in the jungle. And then they call up uh, Ryder White, and he's like, yeah, sure, sounds like a plan. Um, chapter 14, the last chapter we'll cover tonight. Uh, they take Moen's boat through the waterways. Uh, it's Sam, Perna, and Logan are with him while May is staying back with Jin uh, back at the town. And while they're on the boat, Moen just fires his gun randomly. At, he's like, why are you firing at these logs? And he's like, oh, no, they're crocodiles. I like to keep them scared. I think it would be funnier if they were just fucking logs. Like yeah. they aren't actually crocodiles. <laughs> he just never figured it out. He's like, ah, they're just really good fakes. I don't know. I just, really good uh, fakes. Yeah. So the journey takes three hours. Uh, they get off the boat and they take another hour to walk to the lab and they have some... Uh, so at this point in the book, um, just to follow up, you know, on the discussion we were having earlier about Logan and the shit that comes out of his mouth, there is an interlude here about how Sam and Perna have realized that Logan is a good and likable travel companion. Yep. They say that. They said that and they really meant it. They really genuinely believe that. And, and it lying. makes... All it does is make me like Sam and Perna less. <laughs> yep. I don't know how... Again, if you skip that section where we talked about what Logan said, good call, but yeah. he said some horrendous shit. He made a, a joke that was so in such poor taste um, that potentially I might rip the page that it exists uh, on out of the Kindle download that I got for this book. Uh, I will figure out a way to remove it from Amazon servers. It's so bad. Uh and they're like, yeah, 
this guy's pretty chill. I don't know. Hasn't said anything fucked up in the last four hours, so we'll keep him around. <laughs> like, no. What the fuck? Just acknowledge that he sucks, at least. Like, say, at least if they were like, yeah, he's just some messed up stuff and he's not very useful at fighting, but uh, he, uh, um. I like him. Do for you? some reason. Like, Do you? Really? He's, he's just got a vibe to him, you know? He's, he's just, just there. Gotta, there's something about him. Like he's just he's, there in, the, he's saying, in the game is the feeling. He's I'm in getting. the game. <laughs> he's in the game. And that's he's in the game. That's yep. what we like about him is he is here. Uh, my note around that uh, after that was don't know about that one, chief. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, they get to the facility. There's a lot of guards around it. Uh, real umbrella situation. Uh, Moen goes to talk about, talk to the, uh, the mustachioed guard for a bit, uh, and then they're let in, but, uh, the guards want them to give up their weapons. The gang won't give up their weapons and they're allowed to, in the end, they're allowed to keep them as long as they keep them on their backs. Um, while they're walking through the hallways, Logan thinks about his favorite movie, The Thing. John Carpenter's The Thing. And I'm like, God damn it. You had to associate <laughs> Logan with my favorite movie of all time, you had to, they're, t they're together now. Yep. Out there in the universe. The, the worst guy you've ever met says the one worst. correct thing. Like. Says one, yes. Unfortunately. Heartbreaking. <laughs> I can't believe I can't, I, I could never watch the thing again. You know, I've never actually seen John Carpenter's The Thing. You should. You yeah. should. If it, it's, it's, it's. Is it the greatest movie. film ever made? It is. Yeah. Could be. Okay. Yeah. It's got Kurt Russell. Okay. Like really Kurt. He's really Kurt Russell in a I've seen screen this. caps. He looks pretty hot. He's he's fucking Kurt Russell. And he's like, he's got, you know, he's got the lighting on. He's he like invented the by lighting for right. for this this movie. <laughs> he's got the mane. He's got the, the he's got the mane of hair. He's got the beard. He's looking beautiful. Uh, a lot of and you know what? Uh, uh Wilford Brimley's in it. And we talked about Wilford Brimley. Oh, dude, Flatley. diabetes guy. Wait, he's in I, movies. So, okay. So obviously I'm a lot younger than you. Um, yeah. But like, so, so cultural stuff like that. I don't really, Wilford Brimley to me is literally just diabetes commercials and, and family guy references. Is he an actor? Was he in movies? Yeah. Okay. There are movies you can see with Wilford Brimley huh. as an actor. Um, Wilford Brimley in The Thing has no facial hair. Whoa. Did he have diabetes there, you think? I uh, probably. Pro probably. You know, yeah. he's he's looking a pretty rough. He's like, let's see, how old was he? It was it was 1981, I want to say, 1982. And Wilfred Brimley was born in so 34. Uh holy shit. How was he He was only like wait. How old was he? Uh, 80, 82 minus 34 is... He was 48. He was a rough-looking 48. Yeah. Wow. You ever see those old-timey pictures where it's like, like, this man's 20, and he looks like 60? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like uh, Morgan Freeman's always been like 80 in my head. Yeah, he's been 80 for a long time. Yeah, him and um, Michael Caine. Michael Caine. Michael Caine. Uh, some men just want to watch the world burn. Ooh. Uh, that was more Sean Connery. It was good, though. I like that. That was, was, okay. was a little too Sean. Um, yeah, he was in a episode of Seinfeld, too. Uh, a lot oh, junk of his mail. movies are... Right, he's in the mail yeah. one uh, where they, they go to... Um... Oh, yeah, okay. All right. I have seen him before in, in as an actor. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he plays Blair, Doctor Blair, in the thing, um, and he's he he is so not Wilford. Like there are so many good moments with just like just with him in that movie. Um, so it's it's a it's a real all star uh, cast and crew. Um, the president from fucking Clear and Present Danger. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> really the, dude okay i've never looked at the full cast for this movie yeah you'll recognize a few of them and if you don't recognize their names you, you'll like see watch dude, the keith movie david? like uh, oh yeah keith david is like the second 
main second cast guy or whatever. Huh. Yeah. I might watch this tonight. Yeah, put it on. You know? All right. Yeah. Look at that. We got something good out of this. It all worked we out. We got something good out of it. <laughs> um, yeah. And Adrian Barbeau is the voice of the only woman in the movie is uh, the voice sounds of like a an 80s movie. Sounds like an 80s movie. <laughs> so speaking of 80s movies, uh, they meet Dr. West, um, oh. which is a that's a reanimator reference right there. I mean, sure, it's reanimator was written by a uh, fucking Lovecraft, but the, the mo- I'm talking about the movie. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And the movie came out in the 80s. Uh, anyway, West is doing some terrible things to animals, including vivisection. If you don't know what vivisection is, don't look it up. Uh, and <laughs> not even going to get into it. He's nope. worried for a second uh, that the group is uh, is animal rights activists, but then breathes a sigh of relief when he finds out that they don't give a shit. Uh, West, you know, speaking denies- of vivisection, by the way, I know you don't want to talk yeah. about it, uh, but go go what, for it. You know what? Uh, the only We're reason I want to talk about it briefly is because when I was in elementary school, uh, this I know, right? Elementary school. Uh, yeah. There was this field trip that we went on to the Ontario Science Center, um, which was like this just big collection of science stuff. Can you believe it? It was a center for it, in fact. Yeah. Uh, and they had a vivisection of a human being like on display in the human body exhibit. And you could just see and they had like the nerves all splayed out. And I was like, God. That's what I look like on the inside. Uh, but I was like maybe 10 or 11 years old. I'm like, why do I, why am I seeing this? <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. Sure. We're yeah. all just bags of meat. That's what I learned as a child. Bags, sacks of meat and jelly. Yep. Um, with some crunchy, crunchy bones in there too. Mm, good uh, bones. <laughs> good bones. You throw, you know, you throw, throw those bones into a pot, a few, few potatoes, uh, some carrots. A you get human a stew. stew? Mm. <laughs> all right i like where your brain's going <laughs> you got a stew going baby mm. uh, <laughs> so west denies creating the virus uh and he also didn't know that it had like expanded beyond uh where it's from he gives the backstory of the virus it's from a local tribe of cannibals called the karuni and the virus had lasted a long time within the tribe, but people are mostly immune to it within the tribe. Uh, something about the virus had changed recently. And let me tell you, when you find out, it is the it is it is number two, the number two worst thing. Actually, it could be tied for the worst thing to happen in the book. The information we get from that, that is fucking gross. Um <laughs> But we'll talk about that next episode. Yeah. God. It's, anyway. That's also yeah. in the game, by the way. Yeah. I thought it yeah. wasn't. I had to look it up. I was like, is this really from the... No, yeah. That one was definitely... The next one that's coming up is definitely from the game. That, maybe Dead Island uh, should have never gotten uh, a sequel. And uh, maybe the devs should have, like, not done this <laughs> at yeah, all. Maybe. You know, it really makes me, like... Uh, I'm like ashamed of liking Dying Light now. Yeah, I feel exactly the same. Because <laughs> I love Dying Light One. I think that game's amazing. Dying Light Two is a lot of fun as well. Uh, and I've heard Dead Island Two. You've said it's fine, and I've heard it's, it's, it's pretty good. Right. It's um, got Dying Light vibes. Yeah. But now I'm like, I don't know if I ever want to play any of those games. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to find out that there's more of this in those games somewhere hidden, and I just find out 20 years later when I read the novelization for this podcast. Yeah, uh, I was considering putting the novelization for Dying Light on on the show sometime this year. I'm rethinking it. Uh, maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. Might go for some lighter fare. Um, like a King's Quest novelization. Oh, that Those sounds are, nice. That sounds like a lovely little romp. Um, so, cannibals, huh? All right. Um, no way this is going to be racist. Uh, some... <laughs> <laughs> so far, all I've learned about this book is you can make anything racist if you try hard enough. If you try hard if enough. You, just... <laughs> uh, 
You know, I'm surprised it didn't have that some of that old white European racism. I, I like I I was surprised that there weren't something a line about Sicilians in here or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those Irish. <laughs> You know, <laughs> it's fucking Irish, you know, like just an English character talking about the, the Irish. <laughs> well, they're at the hotel. Oh, I had to go. I had to come to Hanoi. I didn't want to stay on the island and hang out with those Irish. Ugh. Too many Irish have came over recently. Well, this guy's Welsh, mm. right? Maybe maybe he's down. With the, maybe he's down with the Irish. He's Welsh. Yeah, I think. Uh, Anyway. Uh, West believes that the virus is similar to Kuru, which is a prion disease that affects the brain similar in how mad cow works. And I was like, all right, that's, that's some decent science stuff in there. Like, so mad cow disease is a, is a prion disease that cows get from eating cow brain. Um, okay. I know of so, the disease. I didn't know how it was transferred. Because, like, that yeah. shit is so bad. I imagine, like, part of that is is part, probably research. But I was really, really bad in the UK, um, mad cow disease, the spread of it. Yeah. Um. So he probably just knows that offhand from when it happened. Yeah. Uh. But also, right. yeah, that is, like, actually how it works. Like, it's so bad that if you have mad cow disease, like, if you had the prions in your brain, if they do surgery on you, everything that touched you or your brain goes in the garbage they get rid of that forever because yeah. that shit does not, yeah. you cannot kill it and it will kill you yeah. if you get it. Like wild, scary yeah. stuff. Prions. I, I remember reading something on uh, Reddit. It was like a list of like, what's something terrifying that not enough people talk about? And it was one of it was uh, like 10 people mentioned prions and like, and I was like, oh, this sounds terrible. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's like the the like your body stops knowing what how to like work protein, basically. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um so uh West gives them a fetch quest. Uh he needs the blood of a Karuni villager and a version of the virus from a dead body, a stable version of the virus from a dead body within the last two years. Uh, and guess what? Even though the doctor knows the Karuni people and probably knows how to speak their language, maybe he's going to send the gang to go get this stuff and quest start. Yeah. Luckily they don't we'll need to it. get blood. It can just be any DNA sample. So that's nice. Yeah. 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 yeah they they, they, just, they just need. Yeah. Easy quest. Just slice off a sliver. Yeah. Low drop rate. Doesn't matter. Or, or high drop rate. Actually anything that they drop. You don't need like some yeah. one percenter. You're lucky. You're in <laughs> You're yeah, good hands it, can be a, it can be a common, you know, yep. it doesn't need to be a rare. <laughs> the loot table, pretty solid for this quest, I feel like. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, I don't know if we need to recap any of that, uh, nope. how we're feeling about any of that. I think we made ourselves pretty clear. So, Jesse, uh, what are you playing? <laughs> Moving right on. Fuck yeah, it. Yeah, just never mind. Normally book? we talk about the book some more. Not like interested. how we're feeling. I'm not doing that with this book. Nope. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> at this point, it almost feels like an obligation. It's just so, so, <laughs> I was like an obligation. fucking checked out, man. We'll see if I even, yeah, we'll see if I even have notes for the next episode. Yeah. I just. <laughs> and then the book was over. What are you playing? That's, that'll be the next episode. <laughs> the um, next episode will just be, what are you playing for an hour? <laughs> So, uh, what have I been playing? I, uh, have finished Yakuza Kiwami 2. I'm still on my mission through the, uh, world of Japan, uh, making my way through Kamurocho and, uh, Sotenbori now, and it's, uh, it's been fun, I guess. I really liked Kiwami 1 and, uh, Kiwami 2, which are the remakes of the original Yakuza 1 and 2 for the PS2. Uh, right. they are full-on remakes in that they, like, redo a bunch of the scenes, but they're in higher quality, and they add stuff to tie it in with the prequel game that they made, Yakuza 0. Uh, I haven't played that one yet. I'm playing in release order, but using the remakes, which is maybe a bad call, but it's been okay. Uh, Yeah, I really, really enjoy it. There's something about the sort of beat-em-up action that you get from the Yakuza series, which is spammy and, like, honestly a little too easy and simple, um, but sure. still is just good enough, just serviceable enough to get you through just this world. Just hit people with bikes, you know. Yeah, pick, exactly. Pick just bicycle. beat the shit out of them with bikes. That's all you need. Pick up a, <laughs> a, a traffic cone and just, like, just smash them in the face with it. it. It's just, the reason I like the games so far, anyways, is the vibe and, like, the mood sure. and the atmosphere and the characters. I like the cast. 
Uh, so I'm here for that. Like I, I could watch them do something awful for six hours and still have a good time because they're just so lovable and they're so fun. And yeah. It's the world. Yeah. It's so goofy and wacky. And it's just, isn't this what Japan's really like? Everywhere you it's go, people have funny side quests for you. To lovable, do. lovable crime lords. Yeah. You know? It's just like, <laughs> I honestly can't believe, and I know they've made them, but I can't believe there hasn't been a Sopranos game or, or something in that vein it's that feels like, this yeah, good. <laughs> But yeah, but like, guess what Yakuza is? Like, the more I play it, the more I'm like, oh yeah, Christopher and Polly would do this side quest for sure. Yeah, yeah they'd be pissed about it. Where do you want me to go in Yakuza? <laughs> the Pine Barrens? Not again. Um, oh, Chrissy, <laughs> can you believe it? This guy comes over here, he's he's taking his pants off. I'm like, oh, I don't want none of that. Oh, 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 oh look at that. He's, he's got his brajol sticking out. I don't want none of that. <laughs> like, put him in the Yakuza world. They, they fit perfectly. <laughs> You're set up. It's, yeah. They got to do that. They got to make great. a real Sopranos game. I guess they can't bring the cast, yeah. but they should do it. Like, make a better one than the, uh, the bad yeah, PS2 like they, one they made. Yeah, they had those, they had those fucking Mafia games, and like, we don't, they're like, yeah, that's pretty close. Mafia 2's all right, but it's not as silly. It's not silly It's enough. not as silly. We need a, we need a level of silliness. Yeah. I wonder if the creator of Shenmue really knew and understood that this is where, like, this formula of game that he was creating with Shenmue was going. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because he went to he goes to make Shenmue three and he's like, I don't know, man. I guess I guess got what do I do? People want Yakuza. What do now. I do? That's what the There's, games are, but like, I can't do that. He's like, I made Shenmue. I sh made Shenmue one. I made Shenmue two, and then the twenty Yakuza games in between. <laughs> <laughs> and then no one liked Shenmue three. Uh, but what are you playing, no Kevin? What are you playing? It. Oh, uh, so I'm still playing uh, Rogue Trader, still still having a, a lot of fun with that. I, I tried firing up Lords of the Fallen. Ooh, sorry, which, is this, this is the new one. This is the new one. Okay. Yeah. Also called, the, one no, the first one was the Lords of the Fallen, and this one's just Lords of the Fallen? Uh, maybe. I need to, I'm Googling, <laughs> I'm Googling. What's the difference between Lords of the Fallen and Lords of the Fallen? I think it's Lords of the Fallen <laughs> is the new one, and the original is the Lords of the Fallen, right? That has to Maybe. be what it is. No, it's the first one is also Lords of the Fallen. Why? Yeah. Why? Why? I don't know. Um. Anyway. Anyway, how is yeah, it? Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nice. So nice. Um, is it like a Souls like still? It is very much. It is very much a Souls like with extra stuff on it. Like you have this. So you have this like lantern thing, and you can switch at certain points. You can like switch phases of the world, and you're fighting things. It's like you switch to the upside down version. Oh, okay. So it's like a dark world. There's like a dark world and a okay. light world, but the light world is also pretty damn dark. Okay, so dark world um, and a darker world. <laughs> dark and darker. Okay. Is, is the, is, the uh, is kind of how it's built. Um, yeah, I played like 30 to 45 minutes of it so far. It's fine. Uh, it says it's like, I was playing on my Steam Deck. It's like verified for Steam Deck, thumbs up. Everything was like, everything about the UI and maybe this is something I can adjust just felt like too tiny. Mm. I was like looking at the Steam Deck I was like, what What do I have equipped? What the is fuck's this a game going for on? Ants? Was this a game for ants? <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, I'll probably keep at it, but I might start playing it on my my actual computer rather than the Steam Deck because I it's like I've been looking for something else to play on my Steam Deck, right? right? I was like, ah, maybe this is a Steam Deck game. And you know, like Lies of P, even though I not like a huge fan of Lies of P just because I feel like there's some weird wonkiness with like the scaling of certain enemies and bosses and all that stuff. I mean, that's that's pr that's a pretty common uh souls like issue, but Specific, I, I had a lot of thoughts about Lies of P, uh, but Lies of P was perfect. Mwah. Dream on the Steam Deck. Like the UI was like perfectly sized. Everything just looked good. Lords of the Fallen was just like, ah, there's a lot of information on the screen. It feels like there's a lot of things going on. 
I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. Yeah. Um, looks kind of, and also the, uh, the, I, I forget what the, the call it the maison son <laughs> <laughs> of the game. It's just like too muddy, you know, right. it just feel like it doesn't, it doesn't have the readability that it should have. Um, so yeah, other than that, uh, still I, I managed to put it in like another 10, 15 hours on Rogue Trader somehow. I don't know. Damn. It's like I play, I start playing that game and it's like, I'll start it at like nine and suddenly it's midnight. Don't know how that happens. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's that's a sign of a good game, man, when you can put it on and just time flies and you don't notice it. That's yeah, good. That's, exactly. uh, sorry to hear that about Lords of the Fallen. Hopefully um, they fix that. Because it didn't come out too hot, right? Like It's, it's, it's mixed. Reviews were pretty uh, mediocre. This- yeah, it's it's straight up mixed on the store page. That's sad because uh, the original Lords of the Fallen is also mixed on its store page. You they know, just can't they, get it right. They, they try it again, still mid. Damn. They, what Lords a shame. of the mid. Am I right? Oh. <laughs> hey. Uh, I'll be here all week. Um, Ah, <laughs> uh, gosh. All right. Well, before we go, Jesse, do you have anything to plug? Uh, yeah, if you can uh, check me out on NoClip, NoClip Podcast, uh, YouTube channel. We're doing a lot of fun new stuff this year. We actually had a meeting today about of a, bu- a bunch of the new stuff that we're planning to do. When this comes out, we might have already put some of them out on our NoClip crew channel, uh, where we're posting more uh, gameplay highlights of, of new games, old games, stuff that interests us, uh, bringing back more op-ed pieces. So lots of uh, fun, new, more community-focused content coming from NoClip in 2024, uh, along with new documentaries coming from NoClip and Secret Tape, and we've got a lot of fun stuff going on over there. So check us out on YouTube and Twitter and uh, wherever you get podcasts as well for the NoClip podcast. Awesome, awesome. And for us, uh, before we go, I just want to say a special shout-out to our top patrons, Ruthless Mutter, Jesus Loves You, and Friendly Friend, thank you so much for your patronage, and to all of our patrons, thank you very much. If you're looking where to hear more uh, from us, you can check out uh, uh, Twitter, or as I like to call it, Shitter now. Hey, hey. got him. Take that, Elon, you fucking go. Take that, Elon. I Well, in my head now, it's just place the TW with an X, and you just the ah, X has okay. the sh down and it That's becomes good. shitter. That's good. Yeah. I'm smart. Uh, Did you see the <laughs> Panther video we posted, by the way? That like After Effects <laughs> default. Oh, yeah. You're not on shitter anymore, so you don't see it. Yeah. Uh, he, he I made can some, log like, in bad with a pixelated fucking thing. account. It's, oh, <laughs> oh, God. It's really bad. It's You'll love it when you see it. Uh, you can also find us on Instagram, Blue Sky, and anywhere else at Pixelit Pod. You can go to our. Uh, type in the URL, pixelitpod.com. That'll take us right to that patron page, that Patreon page where you can follow us for updates for free. There is a free tier that you can use to follow us for updates. Or if you want to you have too much money on your wallet, hey, you want to get rid of it, to, to throw some money at us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you so much for listening and have a good night, everybody. <laughs>